Okay, I'm finally done with this uh, little project which ended up being kind of a bigger project than I would have liked it to be but anyway finally got the uh, BLJ 500 completed. Um, I got this at a local buy for a song and a dance without tubes. It originally um, had uh, one driving for 20 LF6 and the seller didn't want to sell it because he was saying how much the tubes were worth and I'm like well I can you know use it without the tube so I got it without the tubes for a song and a dance and uh, I converted it to 6 LF6 but we'll get to that in a minute um, the front of it you know we got main power switch standby switch high low you know AM SSB to SSB as with almost all CB type amps only adds a delay to the relay it does nothing else with the bias or anything else and this originally had a receive preamp in it but on this amp it has been bypassed and that uh, receive e um, amp switch has been converted to a low radio drive like 5 watts and under and a high radio drive like 5 to 20 watt radio it just passed the input um, on that switch now originally there's a switch on the inside uh, on the main board that did that and it was right next to the driver tube and uh, I didn't like the placement of that switch you know reaching down in it you know right next to the driver tube so um, the receive preamp was tied to a, a relay and it had a third relay to key to other two relays and uh, it had problems with those and I replaced the three small relays with one big relay so there is no receive amp relay in this anymore um, drive I kinda think it's mislabeled it a little bit um, that is basically driver tune but they call it drive um, you do not you know tune that down like a dial a watt or a variable power drive uh, that is a tuner that tunes the tune cap for the uh, driver tube this has one driving four lighted pretty cool meter and then it has um, normal uh, plate tune cap and load cap um, adjustments there so that's pretty much it with the front I don't like amps with these kind of chassis with no uh, floor or underneath you know it's got one big board with the tubes mounted on it that if you gotta get underneath that board there to do anything you gotta you know uh, un solder it and remove all the wires and unscrew it and take that board out to mess with it and uh, that's a lot of work you know where if it had a normal um, chassis where you can get under the bottom it would have been a lot easier or if this had a um, um, a cover on the bottom so you can get to that board but it doesn't um, you gotta take it out to um, be able to work on the board I don't like that it's got the one driver tube driving four um, tubes and like I said earlier it had um, 20 LF6 in it and also those five 20 LF6's are hooked directly to the main 110 you know AC coming in and they had them in series so originally this did not have a filament transformer in it but to run the 6 LF6 tubes I did put in a tri filament transformer that guy right there and got the um, rewired the filaments instead of going you know to the mains which I don't like and I think is dangerous that you know got a filament transformer for isolation 6 volts and that filament transformer runs the um, filaments for these tubes and it runs the low voltage stuff like the uh, key and relay and um, it's got bias in it too it's got a little even though this is a grounded grid 
it throws a little bit of a bias on grid one I think um, Palomars and some DNA amps do that also um, it's originally had well still got two transformers it really had two 300 volt transformers wired in series and these one of them arced and when it arced it took out the um, sellers the guy originally had it he had a tram D201A and it took it out and then he didn't know if it was the radio that gave up the ghost so he hooked up a galaxy to it and it took that out too so I found one of the transformers would work for a minute then it would arc and fortunately it didn't take out my little mud duck radio but that's one of the reasons I run that mud duck radio if it take that out you know I spend another twenty dollars and get another mud duck radio to replace it no big deal but anyway since one of the transformers was shorted and I couldn't find it or arced and I couldn't find a replacement and I had a um, homemade look like somebody tried to make a copy of a Maverick 250 and it had the DNA transformers in it for the um, that homemade uh, Maverick 250 junk box so I took those out with the same transformers used in a um, Phantom 500 too I think if I remember right there Stancor P3889 if I remember right so anyway I took them both the originals out, one good, one bad, and put in these um, 600 volt transformers and wired them in parallel instead of in series. So it should be a more stable amplifier with those. And that's the one replacement relay there where I got rid of the uh, preamp relay and it also had a uh, second relay or a third relay to turn on the preamp relay and the key in relay and um, also the high voltage windings um, go through the relay um, the third relay on it so with this big relay with lots of space and gap in between the uh, contacts I didn't need the three relays the one does the job of the two and got rid of the uh, preamp the preamp wasn't any good in this anyway it, it did work but it wasn't tunable and it just brought in a bunch of noise and um, you know with the transformers on a separate winding and the transformers being switched by a relay I didn't like it you know that configuration with three relays in it I think it's a much better amplifier now um, than it was originally with the two transformers in series going through a relay and the preamp relay and all that um, and the tubes you know wired to the mains it's this um, original power supply has been recapped and got some um, 5 watt I think um, bleeder resistors on it so um, that's been redone and it's real clean as you can see um, driver tube there does not have a tuned input if I can zoom in see that on off space right there that was the original um, pad for the drive that I was talking about for the input um, where with it off the uh, uh, input goes straight you know into the amp and with it on it went to that big um, green resistor there to kinda knock the drive down some I guess they didn't want you to you know put too much into that one driver tube you know where most amp amplifiers with the uh, four finals got two driver tubes so I can guess I see that's why they did it I believe but anyway that switch has just been moved that orange wire coming out and it goes to that um, receive amp switch now it's, it goes to the drive other than that um, it's pretty much um, stock the way it was um, there's a lot of questions on how these amps work and what do they do and all that basically these amps are not that far from a um, uh, I would say the Maverick 250 or a DNA amp except the tube configuration you know they're 12 pin tubes and this one has one driving for where the uh, Maverick 250 has four smaller tubes driving four final tubes but you know other than the um, amount of tubes and all that it's kind of set up 
similar to a uh, DNA Maverick 250, you know, the two transformers. And these transformers, you know, are kind of in a way from a Maverick 250. Uh, power supply is similar. The Mavericks and Phantoms use a relay to cut off the high voltage, which this one does, even though I put it on one relay. And it's a basic grounded grid amp. It's not you know anything special it's not a modulator or a tetrode or turbocharge or anything like that it's a basic grounded grid amp it's you know a lot of uh, no information and some misinformation on these amps and uh, we reverse engineered it so like I say it's just basically a um, a grounded grid amplifier you know power supply board there for the high voltage over here is the low voltage power supply and the bias negative bias it has about 12 volts of negative bias and over there is the keying circuit and preamp board even though the creep preamp is um, disconnected on that you know your four final tubes your um, tune and load cap your um, coil fan in the middle of it your one driver tube and that's what I was saying that driver well it's just got driver on the front there you know, or drive that's not a variable as far as drive power that's a tuner so you always want to tune that for max output you don't want to tune that down like you would with the variable or else you're gonna kill kill that one driver tube pretty quick and um, that's the basics of this amp nice lighted meter so it's got some good things in it. It's got some things I don't like. I hate that chassis. And I hate that the tubes are... I don't mind that they're mounted on a board. But I do mind how they got it where you can't get to it. If it had an access panel underneath. Or the way to get to it, it wouldn't be so bad. But this thing was a nightmare to work on. Right quick, we'll show the back of this. How those transformers stick out on the back side that's normal and your coax coming in and that's basically it pretty clean looking guy right so anyway we're gonna turn her on and fire her up and let's put her in standby and we got the mud duck radio but we put a couple other things in line so the mud duck radio by the time the watts get to the amp and to the watt meter it's not doing a lot at all so we also put a JB12 in line. So on the 20 watt scale, with the mud duck radio and the input watt meter, the preamp, the JB200's in line, the JB12's in line, two switch boxes there are in line, then the BLJ, and then the um, MFJ giant watt meter, and then the dummy load. Uh, it's a lot backing that radio down, so. All that in line, the radio's dead key in it, too. Audio, audio. <whistles> Swing in a four, so that's why we put the little JB12 in line, because um, that'll drive this, but it won't drive it that hard. With the JB12, we got it back down, too, so let's see where it's at. Got the... Uh, JB12 on, the BLJ is off. And I'm dead keying a half a watt. But I'm swinging a 7 now, and that's on uh, average. Hello, hello. Not much. And then on peak. Audio, audio, audio. Big difference between peak and average, right? So we're approaching 20, 25 watts of peak watts into this thing. Alright, we ought to be warmed up. You're going to turn the JB12 back off and this um, put the BLJ on high, operate already on high, and we're going to key her down 2000 watt scale when we go to the watt meter above. And again, that's just the mud duck radio on the top 2000 watt scale. And hello, hello, we're sitting at a little over 300. Barely going for it with the whistle to 350 on average. We're going to turn the little uh, JB12 on. 
you know, only doing a half a lot, swinging about six or seven average. So half lot in this dead key in about 175 now. Still talking about 300. And whistling close to four with the JV12 putting about 20 watts peak into this thing. And last, we're going to put it on peak with the JV12 on. Audio, audio, audio. She holding right at uh, 500. Hello, 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 hello. Peak watts. Hello, hello. And as you can see, the JB12 back down. Everything back down. I think that's a good drive. You know, half watt, one watt. Swinging about seven average, maybe 20 peak. That's all this uh, thing needs. And I think it'll do it all day long uh, with the uh, DNA transformers. You don't want to kick it too hard with the one driving tube, one driver tube. You kill that too. But anyway, that's going to be it for this um, old uh, BLJ 500. Glad to get this one over with. Bye.